Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Pursuit is now 5570 westbound for 111. Let's go, Bill. He's running, he's running. Oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. The suspect's still going! This looks like Smokey and the Bandit. These police officers came out of nowhere. This guy's a hell of a driver. Insane speed. Bizarre vehicles. Okay, he's not stopping. Desperate people behind the wheel. Whoa. Dangerous pursuits. Don't run, I'm serious. You can't get away. You cannot get away. Some of what you are about to see in the next hour will be alarming. Jeez. This is the real thing. <laughs> Filmed while it actually happened. Gathered here for the first time on TV. Please, please. From news crews and police agencies across the country. They send these frightening chases to us for one reason and one reason only. To save lives. We have to go for it. Because police are in danger. Innocent motorists are in danger. Bystanders are in danger. And if you are ever stupid enough to think you can beat the law, you are really in danger. You have never seen anything like this. The most dangerous thing about most pursuits is speed. For a crook on the run, speed acts like a narcotic. It blocks out all reason. It's a drug that says don't stop. Over the past few years, police officers have sent us the wildest, the biggest, and the most dangerous chases the world has ever seen. Each has come with a warning. There he goes, there he goes. This could happen to you. Oh, oh no, oh no. Oh. But some criminals never learn. The chases have gotten bigger. And then he's losing soda all over the place. With getaway rigs this huge, the consequences are colossal. Phoenix, Arizona. This guy's out here threatening everybody's life with a dump truck, running red lights, running in the opposite lane, oncoming traffic. In the early hours of the morning, Phoenix commuters are caught off guard by a stolen dump truck blasting down city streets. Oh, look at that, man. A truck nearly hit him. Even the helicopter pilot is frustrated by the maniac's menacing ride. Here he goes, center lane, red light. This is serious here. Oh, look at this guy. Police make their presence known, but it doesn't have the desired effect. Look at this, look at this, oh man. Almost head on, head on with a police cruiser. It's just, just a crazy situation here. The road monster shows no fear, steering the rig straight at the police and smashing into anyone who gets in his way. Unbelievable. The city is held hostage by this 80,000 pound bullet with the power of a Sherman tank. And then it happens. Red light, red light. Oh! Oh! The suspect pushes his luck at one intersection too many. He slams into a sedan carrying a couple and their three children. The tumbling truck takes out a traffic signal as it splays down the street. Oh! Oh! Unbelievably, the suspect is out and running with police nowhere in sight. Then suddenly, he encounters a lone civilian who stops him cold with a baseball bat. It turns out the pursuit had been broadcast on radio and TV. People on the way to work were both frightened and angry. This guy's out here threatening everybody's life with a dump truck. One man heard about these terrifying events as the chase came toward his home. Oh man, he's trying to hit the squad cars. 
so he grabbed his Louisville slugger on his way out the door, just in case. Oh, man. And when the brutal crash happens right in front of him, it's more than he can take. The civilian pursues, determined to stop this guy from getting away. Within moments, officers arrive on the scene. They know all too well the emotions the civilian is feeling, but they also know there's a proper way to handle things. The fight is broken up and the arrest quickly made. Incredibly, the family of five escaped serious injury. I think that may be them down there. Thankfully, they're standing and they're okay. The suspect, however, is a bit the worse for wear. He's lucky that in the end, cooler heads and justice prevail. Jefferson County, Alabama. I got him on the radar at 87, in a 70. Deputy Philip Humphreys has spotted a driver who's not only speeding, he's having trouble deciding which part of the road is his. Drunk, more like blotto. Stop your car now, pull off the road. Soon, Humphreys gets some backup to help make his point. I see a unit in front of I'm not sure who it is. As the third unit closes in, the driver, who's probably seen twice as many, decides there's only one way out. Without any thought to reason or consequence, the booze hound rattles through the overgrown median and straight into the teeth of oncoming lanes. He sees that's not a good idea. There's no way Humphreys is letting this loopy tour go any further. We need to space this out a little bit. If this guy thinks the world is spinning now, he ain't seen nothing yet. The textbook hit sends the drunk's car skidding to a halt, killing the engine. The well-aimed sidearm convinces him that cooperation is his best alternative. Police used proper protocol and decisive action when needed. And considering that this guy was also found to have outstanding warrants, you can bet the judge will see it the same way. Los Angeles, California. Near the downtown area, a hot dogging motorcycle was lit up by police for a minor traffic violation. It was a minor violation. He apparently just refused to pull over. But his hot dogging is just getting started. We've been following this guy for about four minutes now. The rider slows down and glances back to make sure he still has pursuers. For officers, it's a terrifying realization. This guy is actually playing to the cameras. You can see him looking back. He's chucking for cruisers behind him. He throttles his bike up to more than 110 miles an hour. He is really turning it on right now. Just barely got past that car as he races down that yellow line. He's, he's, he's moving. He's really moving. Even as traffic backs up around him, he maintains his death-defying speeds. Oh, a couple of motorcycles were blocking the road. He just swerved just in time. But just when he thinks he has the spotlight all to himself, he sees his shadow. There's the CHP motorcycle pulling in from the right. Fighting fire with fire, the California Highway Patrol throws a two-wheeler of their own into the pursuit. The officer is tracking alongside him, and it looks like the suspect is accelerating. The suspect panics, veering wildly through traffic. In a desperate move, the biker goes off-road in order to shake the relentless officer. But the biker actually thinks his skilled maneuvers has sprung him, and he's ready for his grand finale. In a ludicrous bit of grandstanding, the arrogant outlaw actually pops a wheelie, riding it 40 yards down the street. It's a stunt meant just for the cameras, and it's the last thing he plans for them to see. He's turning into a neighborhood here. He disappears down a tree-lined street. Oh, man, where is he? Inside? Police arrive on the scene. They soon find the bike, but the biker is nowhere in sight. They're stopping near some civilians down there trying to, trying to find out where this guy might have gone. It looks like they've lost their man. 
until suddenly the suspect makes his most outrageous move of the day. Is that him? It looks like it looks like he pulled out a sweatshirt. The biker casually steps outside, chatting on the phone. No doubt he wants to tell his friends to check out his chase on TV. It's unbelievable the way he's treating this. He seems to think changing his shirt is a foolproof plan to outfox the eyes in the sky. It only proves who the real fool is. Officers converge on his doorstep. Despite the pleading of his family, this rider's stunt show will not get an encore performance. They got him. They got him. Go he may have been very skilled at handling his bike. He's coming within inches of getting caught on either side of the... But he was very unskilled at handling the law. There's the CHP motorcycle pulling in from the right. And as much as this wild ride might have impressed his friends, <laughs> you can bet it won't impress the judge. Coming up on World's Most Dangerous Police Chases. Thieves on the Run. Station. From small town boosters That's not a good thing. to big city bangers. They're slamming. They're jamming. He's gonna all those cars. Ramming. And cramming. Trying to get away. You can get hurt out here. One of the things that makes any pursuit so dangerous is the total unpredictable nature of the people who are running. So the one thing you can count on is that these people are liable to try anything. Caldwell, Idaho. Still northbound. An officer responds to reports of a dangerous drunk driver. This menace has been drifting all over the road. New occupants look like one's a smaller male, older male, six foot plus. Not only is the driver under the influence, he's underaged and unlicensed. Police don't know any of that. They only know his driving is getting more reckless. Hit a curb, almost hit a bus car. Even when officers give him some room, the reckless youth can't avoid taking an unplanned detour through a shrub. The suspects make it through unscathed. But the car isn't so lucky. It's still uh, northbound now, front left tire down. The close call is too much for the passenger. He wants out. On it. But the driver's not about to stop for him and risk letting the police catch up. Crossing 16th to another stop sign. We've got fans the door trying to come open. The two delinquents continue to argue. Finally, the passenger takes a mad gamble. Passenger door coming open. Passengers out. I'm going after the driver. The way his wasted friend was driving, this guy figured he was safer taking a dive than staying in the car. Incredibly, he's able to get up and walk away. And while the driver's distracted, the cops move in. The felon is able to dodge the first cruiser. But when he tries to fake out the second cop who gets in his way, he's too drunk to pull it off. The officer boxes him in, and the suspect bails. It only buys him an extra minute of freedom. Police apprehend him one block away. A canine sniffs out a small quantity of drugs in the car. But the real indication of why the suspect ran comes when the police search the trunk. Hidden inside are two illegal sawed-off shotguns. Matt, did you see that? That's not a good thing. It's possible the suspects plan to use the weapons for a later crime, but now they'll just be used as evidence. These suspects had a secret they didn't want officers to uncover. They argued about whether they were better off running or giving up, and they made the wrong decision. Passengers out. If they'd surrendered immediately, police might not have had probable cause to search the car. And because they tried to get away, Did you see that? The gun-toting youths only ensured that they wouldn't get away with anything. Air traffic is clear. Montebello, California. This car thief has brought down the wrath of the California Highway Patrol. They were trying to stop him on a possible stolen car, and they told me this guy just rammed two police cruisers. You can see the damage to the front of this car there. The CHP wants this guy bad. 
but he has one thing going for him. Everybody's getting off work right now. Everybody's, it's very crowded. It's 5.30 on a busy afternoon, and he's headed into heavy traffic. Oh, real close, real close. Now he's going right between those two cars. At this point, the officers are faced with a terrible dilemma. Spin this car out and risk a collision, or wait for him to smash into someone. He's going to try and squeeze through all those cars. Oh! All right, here it comes. Highway Patrol coming up fast on his left. But the officer doesn't dare make his move. Not yet. There's too many cars. Too many things can go wrong. The block in the side streets. You can tell they want this guy, but they aren't going to do anything with the rush hour traffic. He's coming up on that red light. He's not slowing down. He's going right through it. This is where professionalism, training, and patience pay off. OK, up ahead, officers do have the street blocked off. This could be the end of it. Could be the end of it. No, he's going up on the sidewalk. Not slowing down. Through that gas station. Very, very dangerous. This rush hour road warrior is begging to be shut down. The only question is when. The officer is moving up. He's hit that other car. This is exactly why police are so reluctant to do these maneuvers in traffic. Innocent motorists can get caught in the middle. They didn't stop him. He's running again. Now the second patrol car is coming up very fast. Yes, and he's pushing him right off the road, jamming him up against that pole. This car is not running again. Do not move! But this is where the real professionalism comes in. Because with a criminal like this, it isn't over till it's over. Officer with a shotgun coming up there. He's in position, in position. The door is open. Someone is coming out. This is where a careless officer can get hurt. Because someone who is this desperate could decide they'd rather shoot it out than go to prison. We can now see hands in the air. Anyone who is willing to take chances like this... He's going through that gas station. ...has proven that he's not going to give up. Not without a fight. So even when the chase is over... You have to make sure that no one else is hiding in that car. Nobody relaxes until they see code four. Then, it's over. Code four, repeat it. It's code four. It's all over. Coming up on world's most dangerous police chases. They're running. And it's gonna fail. Foot fail, foot fail. They're running from the law. But if you're driving, or sitting, and oh, he just hit that car! Or walking, he almost hit that pedestrian! Or riding, he's got a bus in the intersection! Oh. You're in more danger than the criminal on the run. Watch out! El Sereno, California. There appear to be two individuals in the vehicle. In the communities surrounding Los Angeles, pursuits are well known. Vehicle was identified as stolen. And so are the rules. The officers are being very careful at this point. The two guys in this stolen Honda are still waiting to make their move. They know the police have a non-aggressive pursuit policy, as long as they stay under control. This has been going on for about 20 minutes. But Southern California presents many other problems to a crook on the run. Road construction catches these fugitives off guard. We're getting uh, into some traffic cones here, and, and he veers onto the wrong side of the road. The thieves quickly correct back into their lane. They don't want to give pursuing cruisers any reason to turn up the heat. That was an extremely dangerous maneuver. But their biggest problem isn't behind them. It's in front of them. L.A. traffic. We're getting into some congestion here. California freeways are famous for being parking lots without the valets. The suspects desperately search for a way through the log jam. He's weaving very sharply through traffic, and he cuts back right, heads onto the shoulder. The aggressive maneuver buys them a little time, but it also buys them a lot more attention. Additional units are now closing in. 
As the suspects bail off the freeway, a column of squad cars falls in line behind them. I'm counting seven units now in pursuit. It's an old-fashioned L.A. escort, using resources that most cities can only dream about. There are even two police helicopters, in case the suspects bail out in different directions. He's getting onto the northbound 101. The car thieves are beginning to panic. They beeline for another freeway that's normally clear this time of the afternoon. But the city's got one more surprise waiting for them. Oh, almost a collision there. This is some very dangerous weaving on this crowded freeway. Traffic is backed up because of a brush fire beside the road, a hazard common to the area. It proves to be the last straw for these frustrated felons. The driver churns forward, forcing other cars aside. With their options disappearing, the car thieves push their luck one step too far. He just sideswiped that car. Now it's a hit and run case. Seeing cruisers bearing down on him, the driver charges onto one more freeway. It's his last mistake. Northbound 110 now. Traffic is completely blocked, charging down the shoulder. Oh, did he clip that car? This is extremely dangerous. He's coming to an overpass now, and the shoulder is going to give out. Oh, he just hit that car. He just ran into the Jaguar. The driver takes off on foot, racing down the jam-packed freeway. Then he makes a heart-stopping decision. Oh, no, no. He's jumping the divider. He's going to cross oncoming lanes. This could be disastrous. This is the last thing any driver on the freeway expects to see. I think he's going to make it. Unbelievable. Officers right there, they're heading after him. The helicopter hovers above as the driver emerges, still on the run. But the police have a pet nickname for those people who plan to outrun the patrol car and the helicopter. They call them convicts. And this suspect is about to become one. He's surrendering now. He's lying down. Meanwhile, back at the crash site, his buddy didn't bother wasting his energy. He wisely wants to look his best for their next L.A. experience, being stars of their own courtroom drama. All suspects now in custody. Los Angeles, California. This chase is only a few minutes old, and police have already called off ground units, and for good reason. Wrong side of the road, he goes right through that intersection. Oh! The suspect, a 25-year-old gangbanger, is wildly swerving across surface streets at speeds that aren't even safe on the freeway. Going very, very fast here, very, very fast, not slowing down. To add insult to injury, the car is stolen, and a shredded front fender says the suspect's not too concerned with its preservation. In fact, his officers are about to learn he's not too concerned with anything. Not even another human life. Is that confirmed? OK, we just learned that the car was involved in a shooting less than an hour ago. This man is armed and considered very dangerous. The gangster has already attempted the ultimate crime. In his mind, he has absolutely nothing to lose. That makes him a serious liability to public safety and a nightmare for police. Officers being very careful to stay out of sight. They don't want to give this guy any more reason to hurt someone. A police helicopter tracks the suspect from above. But this guy is a professional criminal. He knows what to look for and where. He's leaning over there. I think this guy's looking for air units. This guy knows he's being followed. No doubt about that. This guy knows we're here. The thug immediately devises a plan to lose his pursuers in the sky. Oh, no, he's headed for the airport. Thinking he can ditch the police helicopter in restricted airspace, the hood charges into the area of L.A. airport. But officers are two steps ahead. That sheriff's helicopter has apparently received clearance from the tower to go through LAX airspace. It doesn't take long for the suspect to realize the airport is not going to be a good place to get away. A lot of traffic in this area, a whole lot. Air units watch in disbelief as this frustrated felon roars back into the neighborhood, more dangerous than ever. Oh no, we have cross traffic. Oh! Almost hit that pedestrian, oh my! 
since the suspect remains blatantly reckless, even with police out of sight. Officers debate whether it would be safer just to move in and shut him down. But as soon as one unit makes itself known, the suspect hits the gas and speeds onto the freeway. He's getting on the 405 north here. It looks like he's going to try and put some distance between himself and his cop. This is the kind of thing that gives driving in L.A. a bad name. Just weaving through traffic. I'm feeling this could end in a collision. Realizing that he's not going to shake the helicopter on the freeway, he has one more trick up his sleeve. But this is where his luck runs out. It spins out. Oh, no. He's just sideswiped that UPS truck. The more damage he does to his car, the less control he has over it. This is getting so dangerous. Making sharp turns becomes nearly impossible. But that still doesn't stop him from driving blindly through intersections. Oh no, there's traffic coming the other way. But at these speeds, all it takes is one mistake, one miscalculation. Lord, oh no, he's not gonna stop in time. The suspect wedges himself between two stopped cars. And he's gonna bail, foot bail, foot bail. Police show the suspect just how close they've been the entire time. These officers came out of nowhere. They were right on his tail. In the end, the criminal is literally carried off to face the consequences. But this guy was in trouble before he even started running. He's leaning over there. I think he's looking for air units. He thought he could escape his punishment by taking even greater risks. Oh, oh, I think that's that risk. But in the end, his own path of destruction led him right to the fate he created. Next, on world's most dangerous police chases. Whether they're desperate. Right through the parking lot. Deranged. Distraught. Determined. Get on the ground! Or just plain dumb. Oh, he's going the wrong way. Oh. They all have one thing in common. Oh! They're dangerous. <laughs> Somerville, South Carolina. Just come out of the car back here. We get a right. Local police pursue a man wanted for a string of robberies and attempted murder. Because of the brutality of his crimes, he knows he's facing a lot of hard time. He has nothing to lose, and he drives like it. Turn it right now, Cleveland. Are you getting ready to up there? We got him both ways. We got him both ways. The speed limit in this residential area is only 25, but he floors it, quickly hitting 40, then 50. When he sees there's no traffic in his way, he cranks it up to over 70. But these officers have a little surprise in store for him. Bobby and me got a northbound. Andy and Bill got southbound. A terrified motorist hugs the shoulder as the desperate suspect is forced to turn. Here it comes, here it comes. It's a roadblock and he doesn't even slow down. Step out of the vehicle. When police set up a roadblock, they always leave enough room for a car to get through. But the suspect is going so fast, he doesn't even see it. Within seconds, he's looking down the barrels of four service revolvers. With odds like that, He'll cooperate. Get on the ground! When this menace decided to run from the law, he didn't count on the teamwork of the Somerville PD to bring his days of robbery and attempted murder to a crashing end. Get on the ground! In any chase, the decision to run is made by the criminal alone. And this choice affects a wide range of people, from the police, to other motorists, and sometimes an entire city. Atlanta, Georgia. It's the start of the evening rush hour, and traffic helicopters fill the sky. 
But today, there's more going on below than the usual fender benders. Right in the side road right here is backing up. In this quiet neighborhood, a suspect takes flight from police. Oh my God, he's going the wrong way. He's going the wrong way. Oh man. It's evident right away that this chase is a bigger story than anything else on the road. Oh my God, he just ran a red light. He's gonna kill somebody, man. This outlaw is so reckless, the concerned pilot tries to warn his listeners. You folks that are on Camp Creek Parkway heading up towards Riverside, please be careful. Then as quickly as it began, the pursuit seems to end. The suspect bails on foot, and the chopper loses sight of him in the trees. It turns out to be a trick. Thinking he's lost the helicopters, the fugitive hops back in his truck and starts moving again. He may have briefly thrown off the air units, but the ploy also gave police cruisers an opportunity to catch up. There must be one, two, three, four. There are nine cops chasing this guy, and he has no prayer. They're gonna corner him any minute. But the situation changes when the felon gets on the freeway. In thick rush hour traffic, it'll be hard for police to take him out and easy for him to get into an accident. The chopper pilot does what he can to help people stay safe. Please look in your rear view mirror. If you ever get in this situation and you see a high speed chase in your rear view mirror, what you need to do is stay where you are. Do not change lanes. This is now a citywide event and anyone on the road could be at risk. Whoa, my goodness gracious. Boy, that Coca-Cola truck almost bought it. Hoping to regain the edge, the daredevil heads back onto surface streets. But the criminal has no intention of making things easy. And his driving skill is starting to impress the pilot. I hate to admit, this guy's a hell of a driver. But a fugitive this audacious can only have so many close calls. Before he finally gets too close, he ran through another red light. And this time, he took an innocent driver's bumper with him. But the car-to-car -car contact doesn't slow him down a bit. He continues on a treacherous tour of the entire town. He's at Turner Field, he's at Turner Field right now. And no neighborhood is safe. If you're in the Ashby Road, I-20 area, be prepared. But his next move surprises everyone. He drives into busy Hartsfield Airport. Oh, this ought to be good, he's going into the airport. It's a move straight out of the movies. He knows the helicopters aren't cleared to fly over Hartsfield airspace. By the time they refocus their cameras, the suspect has disappeared. We've lost him for the moment. The outlaw could be anywhere. And if he were to somehow get on a plane, this pursuit could take on a whole new dimension. Whoa! <laughs> we'll be right back with the conclusion to this exciting chase. And you're not going to believe how this marathon ends. Next, on world's most dangerous police chases. Here we go, here we go, he clipped them. More of the wildest, hairiest, oh. scariest, most bizarre. They've got the person out of the vehicle. And unusual chases. Would oh, you see that truck driver right there? Thanks, guys. Ever seen on TV. Oh, Lordy. For police officers in a high-speed pursuit, the only thing worse than a fugitive who won't stop is a fugitive they can't find at all. This careening criminal has been wreaking havoc for nearly half an hour. Oh, man, this guy. Boy, that Coca-Cola truck almost bought it. Thousands of motorists are in harm's way, knowing the outlaw could race by at any moment. By now, he's even lost the media by detouring into an airport. We've lost it for the moment. As the search goes on, whoa! The entire city of Atlanta holds its breath. Just when it seems likely the suspect has ditched his truck and taken off into the terminals, here he is. He reappears. Amazingly, he navigated the airport traffic and shook all but one of the pursuing officers. Now this dangerous driver's back on the freeway with just one objective lose the remaining cruiser. He knows officers want him to get off the interstate, so he uses that fact to his advantage. The crook repeatedly tries to dupe them into thinking he's going to exit. After he's faked them out a few times, he goes for the double cross by getting off for real. 
but the police are on to his games. A black and white waits for him at the bottom of the exit ramp. I think he just made a fatal error right here. Maybe not. The man spotted the officer in just enough time to escape. I really thought they had him. But when they get him on an almost empty street, police see a perfect opportunity to take him out. Here we go, here we go, he clipped him. He got him. But not, not quite, he didn't get him. Despite the hit, the suspect keeps rolling. It's a discouraging near miss for the officers and for the pilot. Here we go again, they had him. Oh man, they had him. Worst of all, it seems to have made the suspect feel invincible. Oh, he's going the wrong way, oh lordy. He races fearlessly up a one-way street. Oh, oh my gosh, he almost clobbered that guy. As terrified motorists stuck for cover, police search for another opportunity to pit the thief. No, come on, come on, come on, get him, get him, get him. Oh, oh my goodness. A tactical ram would be too dangerous in opposing traffic, so officers set up roadblocks instead. They've got a corner because there's a cop up here ready to block this road here at Fulton Street. But the felon sees the other cruiser in plenty of time. Right through the parking lot. There's a Georgia State Patrol car that's going to try to corner. they got two of them up here. He dodges the officers, but his detour takes him right toward a dead end. They've got him. They got him, Corey. Of course, that only means the road is ending. Oh, he's going in the grass. Oh, my goodness gracious. Maniacal moves like this only make the story bigger news. This is all over Metro Atlanta. Everybody in town knows about this chase. But some people who hear about the pursuit want to do more than just watch. And regular citizens pitch in to lend police a hand. Yo, did you see that truck driver right there? He slowed down. Rattled by the forces mounting against him, the suspect swerves erratically. But it turns out this chase has damaged more than his nerves. Look at his right rear tire. He's got a flat. The earlier pit maneuver managed to puncture the truck's tire. Now, with the help of truck drivers, police set him up to finish the job. The truck drivers have literally come to a halt. Thanks, guys. Good job. He's got to get off of Camp Creek. An impromptu roadblock funnels the suspect back off the freeway, where he's more vulnerable. Let's hear it for the truck drivers, man. On surface streets, police search for the opportunity to ram the truck. But the driver eludes them again and again. Oh, I think they've got him. I think they have him. Well, not quite. Oh, he somehow maneuvered around the Georgia State Patrolman. When the suspect turns into a parking lot to avoid traffic, police finally see their chance. But the suspect's unexpected turn puts an innocent driver in his path. Oh, he clipped the car. Again, the suspect shrugs off the hit, leaving the other driver stunned but unhurt. As the truck blazes onward, a stunned motorist has to back up to get out of his way. Backing up beats getting crushed any day. But just as it looks like nothing short of a miracle will end this chase. This looks like Smokey and the Bandit. There must be 15 cops chasing this guy. Police get that miracle. Okay, hold on. It's over. The suspect is run out of gas. Okay, they got him. They got him. And as police take the destructive fugitive off the streets, the entire city can breathe a collective sigh of relief. Woo! Man, oh man, oh man. Ironically, this marathon pursuit actually began as a case of mistaken identity. Police were looking for a burglary suspect when they spotted this guy, who had just stolen this truck off a dealer's lot. Oh, oh my gosh. Of course, by the time this chase ended, he'd build up a laundry list of new charges, from misdemeanor hit and run, felony evading, to assault with a deadly weapon, and of course, Grand Theft Auto. And an entire city watched as he went from low-rent car thief to the most wanted criminal in town. Next up, this chase was impossible. The vehicle was decrepit. Oh, we almost hit that car. The driver was paraplegic. OK, they've got the person out of the vehicle. The collision was unbelievable. Oh. In all my years as a police officer, I've seen chases that have been destructive and dangerous. I've seen chases that have been grotesque and stupid. But every once in a while, you see a chase that combines all of the above. Los Angeles, 
Police pursue an old rust bucket of a Chevy van. Got heavy traffic, heavy traffic here. Unbelievably, the driver is wanted for allegedly trying to run over his own mother only moments ago. Through the gas station at Hyde Park, westbound, westbound at Hyde Park. He roars down the quiet streets, pushing his decrepit vehicle to the limit. Stop signs mean nothing to him. And there he goes. Okay, he's approaching Crenshaw. He's got a lot of cross traffic, a lot of cross traffic. He barely slows down for this city bus. He's on the wrong side of the street, wrong side of the street there. Then the helicopter pilot learns some amazing news. They're telling me now that the police just found out that this driver is paraplegic, unable to move his legs, driving with hand controls only. Oh, there he goes. He almost hit that car right there. It was a blind corner, and he couldn't see the white car. Incredible driving for somebody who can't use his legs. He's soon back up to speed, weaving his way through midday traffic. Looks as though he's going to go into the opposite direction, opposite direction of traffic. Back on the boulevard, he drives with a renewed vengeance, faster and bolder. He skates through one red light, and then another. But he won't be quite so lucky at the next one. OK, he's got the bus in the intersection. Bus in the intersection. He crashed. He TA'd into the bus. Into the bus. There are people on the bus. Look at that. There are people running for their lives on the sidewalk. It looks as though he may be stopped now. He has got severe front end damage. He stopped, and the LAPD is right behind him. The suspect tries to steer away from the inevitable, but it's too late. The bus careens into two other vehicles as frightened onlookers flee for their lives. The van mows down a fire hydrant, which erupts in a massive urban geyser. As the van rolls to a stop, a desperate mother tries to corral her terrified children. It's a horrifying ending, but the surprises are far from over. They've got that person out. He's out of the vehicle. Looks as though, at this point, he's complying with those officers. The suspect drags himself toward the middle of the street. OK, they've got him proned out now. They've got him proned out now. After inspecting the van, officers were able to see the incredible truth for themselves. The man they've been chasing actually is a paraplegic, unable to walk. Using only hand controls to accelerate, and break. This suspect was able to evade officers for 25 minutes. Maybe he couldn't walk, but he sure could run. But to the police and the eight injured passengers on the bus who had to be rushed to the hospital, the suspect is a common criminal, a neighborhood menace. When he gets booked for felony evasion and assault with a deadly weapon, he'll find out that the law is applied quite equally to the disabled and able-bodied alike. Truth is sometimes harsh. And the brutal truth here is, almost every one of these insane risks, every one of these dangerous chases, every one of these horrible accidents could have been avoided by the decision not to run. But the time to decide not to run is now, before it's too late.